Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're going to be going over the Conte 343 tactic they used most commonly at Chelsea. It's a very good tactic, it is a tactic reasonably similar to Mourinho's, it's definitely a sort of counter attack and sort of formation. But if you do like these tactic videos, please do leave this video a like, be sure to comment below and do subscribe to the channel. But let's get into the first tactic test, which is going to be with Tottenham. So let's have a little talk firstly about Conte's system. And now this is going to be the 3-4-3 three, three that he played at Chelsea. Now I am going to break it down, not into too much depth. We're going to talk about it very briefly because I do like to talk about it actually in the 2D sort of section of the video. But this is a general picture of how it lines up. Full credit, by the way, to this website here. Um, I obviously do not own this website, etc., etc. But this is how it sort of lines up and it gives you a rough idea and you will see exactly how it makes more sense down the page, trust me. But you can see here, the centre-backs are happy to push up. Apart from the central one, doesn't really push up too much. You've got Kante and Matic. They're sort of... You'll see that better on down below, but they sort of... They do go forward, but in Conte's tactics, this is what he likes. I call it a diamond. He likes four players to be together on the... Sort of on the wide areas. So you will have Kante get back and defend same with Matic, but also get forward. And they form what I like to call diamonds on each side, because they do look very much like diamonds. And then Costa again, or in this case, Diego Costa, whoever your striker is, is going to be the main goal scorer. But again, will get back and help, you know, link up the play. Both of these forwards are sort of, you know, they're quite narrow in a way because obviously they are sort of designed to make this diamond. And obviously, if Pedro was out here all the time, it wouldn't really form a diamond, would it? So it is quite a narrow style of play, to be honest with you guys. But if we go down then, well, this is the one I wanted to show you. So this is what I mean, right? So... If we imagine this, obviously, this is going to be the back three. And this is where you see the diamond. This is where you see the diamond. Um, and it is a really good way of playing, to be honest, because, I mean, you've got loads of options on the ball. It's like you can pass between four plays. And then, obviously, this guy, or number seven and number 28, can all have quite an easy pass back to Louise or into Matic. And then they can form another diamond on this left-hand side if they wanted to. Traditionally, a lot of it is done through the right. But I mean, to be honest, I'm a big fan of how this plays out. It's very unique and it worked with Chelsea really well. Obviously, Conte in more modern football possibly does um, adapt to a 3-5-2. But I wanted to make a video purely on the 3-4-3 because when he was at Chelsea, it was a real good, it was a real joy to watch. It was re real, really good formation. Um, and this, this pretty much shows roughly sort of, you know, the transition in between play. So I'll play that a couple of times for you guys as well. But like I said, we are going to look into 2D gameplay. So if you guys understand it better, actually in a Football Manager game, then I will break it down in there too. And we're going to go... The other thing is what I was going to say about the pretty much the advanced sort of side-backs, full-backs. Again, as you can imagine, in a lot of these three-at-the-back systems, the full-backs are very important. They have got... They've got to do a lot of work, I'm going to be honest, because they're not like Jurgen Klopp full-backs in the sense of, you know... Um, they're purely out to, you know, bomb up the wing and get balls in and all of this, like Trent and Robertson. That's no disrespect to them because they do a great job at it. But they are... They are very... I, I would say... It's like having two box to boxes on fullbacks, if you want to put it like that. Because I mean, it's like they're up and down that pitch constantly getting involved. And like I said, if we go down to here, this is where it reminds me a bit like, um, I don't know if it says it in this one, actually. A little bit here about Hazard's freedom. And to be honest, in this tactic, I actually figured out having both of the um sort of wide players be a little bit more free helped a lot more than just having one. That's the only change I really made in this compared to exactly how he plays. Um, I want to see the little bit about the striker. If not, we're good, or we're going to talk about that anyway. Um, not the striker, sorry. So when they do sort of break out from the back, because there is actually a little bit of pressing in Conte's system, very similar to Mourinho's, it does remind me of. Not the same. There are tweaks in it. But again, Conte is not known for playing this elegant short pass on football. It is slightly direct. So you're not going to always have the most possession. You probably won't have a lot of possession at all. But it is all about absorbing the pressure, winning the ball back. And then when you win the ball back, don't get me wrong, these little diamonds that we discussed up here, if we can go all the way back up here, these little diamonds, you can hold the ball well with it, but it's not going to be always ticky tacker. For example, if someone does make a run in behind, you will you will go for the long ball. But that's going to be a very brief breakdown of the tactic. Like I said, I do like to do a little bit in game as well. So that's just a little brief rundown. But let's get in to the first save, which is going to be with Tottenham. So the first save we've done is going to be with Tottenham, and we had a very good season. We didn't manage to win the league, but there again. 
are they going to win the league in real life? Possibly next season, dependent, but still a very solid season, to be honest. So Liverpool just had one of them seasons where they absolutely dominated. Obviously, I'm playing on the up-to-date database, so they have got their new signings as well. Surprised by City as well, not doing as well as what I thought. But we managed to finish in second place and also win the Conference League against Monaco in the final. So a very, very good season there. We were the third best at scoring goals and the fifth best at conceding. So out of the two teams we tested this with, this wasn't the best for um, the amount of goals we conceded. The next save we get into, we were a lot more solid. But to be honest, despite being fifth place at goals conceded, we still had, as you can see, one hell of a season. And the results definitely went our way a lot of the time. And the only disappointment, the whole point, which one thing I was expecting to do better in, would be the FA Cup where we get knocked out against Palace. But I do simulate these games, as I always say. So, I mean, sometimes results will go different ways compared to what if you were going to play them. Because, for example, like if you download this tactic and use it and you go a few goals up, you can play a lot more defensive and maybe not focus on attacking as much. Um, so when you do simulate, obviously it goes down to your assistant. But overall, a very solid season in the first season with Tottenham. And if we go into the squad goals, we're talking 55 for Harry Kane. So just because this is like a defensive tactic, don't feel like you're not going to score a lot of goals because the goals do go in. Um, I feel a lot of people misunderstand that when they see a defensive tactic, they don't think you're going to score a lot of goals, but you, your strikers will get a lot of goals, trust me. We then have Kulaveski, obviously, who's loaned in at the moment. 27 goals. We've got Human Song with 15. Richarlison, the new man, with 13. We've got 12 coming out of Mora. And then assist-wise, we've got 21 from Son. We have got 15 from Royale or Royal, however you want to say that, 14 for Perisic and 12 for Harry Kane. And we've got a few nine and eights. But overall, what I like about this is you do have your main centre forward, your striker or deep line forward in our case. Um, he is going to be the main sort of vocal point, the person you get the ball to. But other players do score as well, which is obviously a very key thing to have because you don't want to rely on the one player all the time. But if we go into the data hub, we're going to look at the basic things again. So here we go then. Team attack him. We, we we scored just over two goals a game. Expected to score just under two, but we ended up scoring above two. That is what I class as the minimum in my tactics. I really like to score at least two goals a game or have at least that potential because one goal is not enough. Two goals should be enough, depending on how well you defend. So overall, this, to be honest, it's quite good. Even the pass completion in this one's reasonably high. You're talking getting on for nearly 90% pass completion. So I mean... To be honest, overall, a very, very solid stat line in that in that, in that that sense of things. Team defending them. Again, perfect. Expected to concede under a goal a game. Expected, to, or sorry, we conceded less than a goal a game. Scored two goals a game. So, I mean, overall, a very, very solid return on that. We're scoring double to what we concede. Meaning, on average, you should be winning a lot of your games. Obviously, this doesn't mean it's going to happen in every game. This is just the average type of thing. But, I mean, overall, I am very happy with how this tactic went. Because, I mean, Tottenham are a great team. But obviously, if I was to use this tactic with sort of like a Liverpool or a City or a United, um, especially United on Football Manager, I guarantee I'd win the Premier League with this. And don't get me wrong, if I was to play this save and it wasn't like a tactic test, I'd bring in some better defenders for Tottenham. Because the one thing I will say is, well, we'll have a quick look at it now. The... The back line isn't the best for Tottenham. I'm going to be honest. We had Romero, Dyer, and Davies. Romero's good. He's a decent player. But... Other than that, they haven't got the strongest back line, and that did say numbers, because when we go over to the Inter Milan save, which we will do in a moment, you'll see what happens when you have a solid back line. The results change drastically, but still a very promising season, and this is how I knew this tactic was good, because at the end of the day, every game... We, we didn't go and score 5-6 every game, don't get me wrong, because that's not what this tactic's about. Conte's well known for sort of, you know, just locking it in and sort of, you know, being defensive, counter-attacking, stuff like that. So, I mean, to be honest, what you get is what you see. What you see is what you get, sorry. Um, And second place in the Premier League is one hell of a season. But let's get in to the Inter Milan save and see how we do over there. Before we do get into the Inter Milan save, though, guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, please do leave a like on the video and be sure to subscribe to the channel. This way, you're never going to miss an upload when I stream, when I do a premiere or a community post. You'll get notified throughout, and it's a great way to stay in touch with the content. There's a lot of videos going on at the moment, including tactics, rebuilds. We've got a new journeyman save going on as well. And it's a very good you know, time to sort of start watching the videos because there's a lot going on. But let's hop over to the Inter Milan save and see how we've done. So this is what I mean. 
by when you've got a slightly better defense because this was absolutely brutal. I mean, we won the league by a long shot, 104 points to 84. We were the best at scoring goals, 122. And this is the really impressive one. 18 conceded in the whole league, best in the league, obviously conceding that. I mean, it's hardly any goals at all. We managed to win, the obviously, the title. We won the Coppa Italia, the runners up in the Super Cup. And the only disappointment was probably the Champions League, but it was a very, very tough draw against Liverpool. And when you play a team like Liverpool, it is always a, it's not a risk, but obviously, because this tactic is more defensively based, if they go a one goal up, possibly two, because I'm not in the game manager myself personally, I can't adapt and change things. So if you guys do manage it, that'd be my one bit of advice. If you go a goal down, especially two, have a have a second formation to play if you do need to go a lot more attacking. Or just change the mentality a little bit, push some more players up. But Lukaku again, the man obviously was at Chelsea, didn't really want to be there from the start, I don't feel. Went back to Inter Milan on loan. We've got him in this save. He managed to score 54 goals in his first season. So I believe that's one less than Harry Kane. But still, a ridiculous amount of goals, and what a striker he is. He seems to love it into Milan, right? I don't know why he left in the first place. I think he'll stay there now for years to come. I mean, that's where he was really good. It's where he thrived, and it's not a, not a dig at him, but he sort of had... Obviously, he was decent at Everton in the Premier League, but then he was sort of the best of a bad bunch in that team. He couldn't hack it at United. He couldn't hack it at Chelsea. It's not a dig at him, but possibly the Premier League just isn't for him. That's as simple as that. We're going to have a little look, Ben, at the squad. So, we've got 54 coming out of Lukaku. We've got Martinez with 21 again. A player who I'm surprised hasn't actually moved on at all. But then he is amazing friends with Lukaku. So now, I don't think he will be looking to move on. We've got 18 from Correa. We've got 15 from Mkhitaryan. Halilognu coming in with 14. Alexa Sanchez still plodding along, getting 14 goals. Assists, we've got 21 for Hakan. We have got 15 for DeMarco. We have got 13 for Gossens. 11 for Barella. 11 for Correa. 10 for Dumfries and 7 for Bastoni, which is quite a lot for a centre-back, to be honest. And if we go into the data hub, we're going to have a little brief down, a little, little rundown. Again, goals scored was absolutely incredible in this league, considering the Serie A is quite well known for being quite a defensive league. There's quite a few teams that do whip out a five at the back. They're quite solid at the back. We managed to score three goals a game, expected of two and a half. Pass completion still very high, to be honest with you. Um, the cross completion, not the best, but then that's not really a not really a worry to be honest in this system but the, this these goals per game i mean three over three goals a game is absolutely ridiculous team defendant again very good a lot better because we do have better center backs putting it bluntly conceded per game sitting at under half a goal so 0.47 however you want to word that expect to concede 0.6 so it's still under a goal a game so when you're when you're scoring three goals and conceding on average less than one even if this said one you'd still be dominating pretty much every game as we did. And if we have a little look, actually, because we can see this, can't we? So we actually, yeah, we won 34, drew two and lost two. And and they were very close losses there, look, only by a goal. So, I mean, it won't, we didn't get dominated at all. A 2-2, a 1-1, and then loads of results here. You can see here a little brief rundown. You got a couple of high scoring games in there just from that lot. Um, but, I mean, no, overall, this, this tactic is a joy to watch. And it really is fun. If we go, I'm going to go ahead and pick a game now is what I'll do. And we are going to go into a bit of 2D analysis. And then we're going to get to the favorite part of the video, which is going to be the tactic breakdown. So the game we've picked is actually going to be a final against Atalanta in what was a 3-0 win. And I'm going to show you how it lines up in game before we actually get into some of the key highlights. So you can see here, it, 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 briefly, you can see it right from kickoff. You've got your three at the back here which is pretty obvious here. We've got the two in midfield. But if you look, already from kickoff, you have got Diamonds Foreman. You've got Diamonds on either side, to be honest. You've got your right-hand centre-back can link up with Barella. And then you've got Correa. And you've also got Dumfries. And that is, it's a bit of a misplaced diamond because we haven't really started the game yet. But that will literally form. So Correa is about here. And it will be a perfect diamond on either side. Same here. Left centre-back. You've got the left side of midfielder. You've got um, Hakan Kalanognu and also the left-back in Gossens. And it is a really effective way because what will happen is when you have the ball with these four players, it will drag a lot of people out to try and start winning that ball back. So obviously, you know, they're going to want to get the ball back. When you've got four players, though, it's quite easy to maintain the ball. And when so many people commit to try and win this back, you can switch it. You can you can go you can play it short and switch it or potentially what we saw a lot um, in other games that I did actually watch myself. We'll be passing about with this four here. A few people were pressing, 
and then this centre back here can simply play a long ball over here and there'd be tons of space. Um, so it is a really good way of playing football. But let's get in to the key highlights now. Hopefully it's going to do it. It might not, right? Let's just go. We'll go back to key then. Here we go. So these are going to be the key highlights. We've got Halonglu with a ball in there. It's a good clearance from Devan. Bastoni running out here. And we'll break it down when we need to. We've got Bastoni with the ball into here. Plays a ball into Skrinar, who obviously a centre-back, because these centre-backs do have a little bit of freedom to push up as well. Plays a lovely ball through, and that is one hell of a touch from Correa, and tucks it into the near post. So these, this is what I do like. With the forward players, let them have a bit of freedom, because... When they have freedom, they will make unique runs. They they are told to, you know, play a little bit narrower just so these diamonds can form. But when they've got the ball, let them have freedom. And when they can make a run, let them have freedom as well. Because you will see a lot better results coming in. So it's actually them with the ball here now. We've got Taloli there with the ball going in. Again, a little bit of pressing coming in from number 20. He's under a lot of pressure. And he actually wins it back, Halanognu. Plays it back into Bastoni in here. So we're going to see it a little bit here. This is actually Lukaku here. He's just won the ball back, so we can't really talk too much about this diamond yet because he's got to get back into position because he should sit about here um, to form that diamond. But even when the diamonds aren't fully on, there are so many options on the ball. You've got Bastoni Brozovic. He could play it to Fridge. You've got number 23 to Barella. You've got 37. I mean, there's tons of options going on. Brozovic plays it back into going to be Bastoni, who goes along with that one. Again, not a great pass. I will say this tactic isn't going to be elegant tiki-taka all the time. If someone thinks there is a good opportunity to play it long, they will go along with the ball. That's just how this system plays. Here again, so they pick up the ball again. Number 33 with the ball. Good press in there again. They do play out of that one, though. Try and run here. Haladogne winning the ball back well. A bit of a weird one. I think he either got a foot on it and it went into the midfield or a very poor pass. Pasina there with the ball again. Working well with it. Taloli with the ball. Back into Pasina. And again here, th this is what I like. Look at the press. You've got number 12 getting back in Gossens. But Bastoni, this is what I like. So obviously, Gossens has pushed up for when we did have the ball. But Bastoni is right here to cover him. And he probably will just about equal him in the foot race. And he does. He It's good marking. Unfortunately, this pocket of space here was open into Illich who gets the ball. But again, we've got... We've got Defending in numbers, it's as simple as that. Defending in numbers. He's forced to go back into the midfield. We sort of shift across then, number 11 and 19 with the ball. Plays it back into number 32. And that is just, that is a defense. It is a defense splitting ball. That's not really anything purely down to the tactic. It's just occasionally a ball will get in behind, however solid you are at the back. A ball goes long into Lukaku, who holds it up quite well. Who He was holding it up quite well. Um, This is one game I've not watched back. So, I mean, we are sort of reacting to this live. Had a lovely with a free kick. Obviously, again, one thing I will recommend, this isn't just purely on this tactic, but if you guys do have um, three at the back in any of your saves, try and have a good set piece taker because when you get the ball in the box, obviously you've got three centre halves, it's better than two. You've got a very good chance of scoring a set piece. It's a very good way of getting goals. Boston's out here with the ball. Ball into Halonognu, and he actually, I thought he was going to square that, but he actually hits it with a lot of power by the looks of it to beat Musso in goal. And that was the goal that put us 2-0 up in the final. Just wait for this goal to be celebrated before we can continue the highlights. Gossens, and again, like, this is a very small like triangle, but as you can see, there's always options on, even from throw-ins, there's always options going on here. Paladogne with the ball into Barella. Again, options, dump freeze with the ball. Good effort, I think that come off the post to be fair to him. But no, I keep saying obviously it's not tiki-taka. That doesn't mean that as soon as you get the ball, it's going to be lumped. You are able to hold the ball, but it's just not going to be like a it's not going to be like a Pep Guardiola style of football. And again, we can sort of see the diamond forming here. Obviously, Bastoni's now sort of pushing up to get into it. But Gossens is here and he can play it into the midfield. And it is a, it is sort of it's an oddly shaped diamond, this one. But four players here. Gossens can obviously go back into Brozovic, who can link it in here if he wanted to. We'll see what they actually decide to do into Brozovic. And yeah, there you go. And that. This is what this is what I mean. Because there's four players always, there's always that opportunity to play the ball back and forth, back and forth. Brozovic again with the ball goes back into Bastoni, obviously part of it. And again, that's nothing down to the system. That's just Bastoni being very poor on the ball, which is unlike him, to be honest with you. Very unlike him. But this is like it's going to be. Is it going to show the corner? It's going to show the corner, which doesn't result in a goal by the looks of things. They get the ball in here. Bastoni clears it out. And obviously... In the Milan, I was sort of blessed with a very good back line. But what I was trying to say with Tottenham wasn't a dig. But obviously, the better defence you have, the better you'll play. That's common sense at the end of the day. 
that didn't mean to rhyme. <laughs> but um, obviously, the better players, the better results. That's just that's just common sense, really. You know, I, I never claim this to be an underdog tactic. When I do upload an underdog tactic, I will test it with ridiculously small teams. Um, but this isn't, you know. Don't get me wrong. You could use this with a mid-table team, but I do think a very. I watch a lot of YouTube videos regarding Football Manager, and I see YouTubers get slated for tactics and stuff like this because people think that when they watch a video and this test of like an Inter Milan or a Spurs, they can go and put it on a Norwich and win the league. Like, just you know, it is also down to the players. Obviously, you guys have got to tweak the tactic in game yourself as well. To adjust to how the game feels, how it's going, etc. etc. But let's carry on to this then. So we've got Gossens with the ball here, back into Bastoni, back into Gossens. There's always options. There's always options on the ball. Halavognu plays it right inside there to Martinez. A wide ball over into Mikatarian with the ball here. Is he gonna get it in? Oh, there's a clearance from Bastoni. Okay, Dumfries. Ball into here, taking his time with it, to be fair. Into Brozovic, into Lorato. A very poor pass. The passing did seem a bit off here, but overall, the passing stat was quite good, so it possibly was just this game, maybe a bit of fatigue. But Stoney, Gossens, again, loads of options on the ball, which is always good to see, but he goes for the long ball. Mkhitaryan allowed that space to roam. A bit of a mix-up at the back from them, and that is going to be the end of that game in what was a 3-0 win in the cup final. So I hope that sort of breaks down how it shapes at the start and how the sort of attack and play can work and also a bit of the defensive play. Um, do let me know in the comments though, guys, if you want to see the bit, the, the bit that I do at the beginning is more just a very brief rundown before we get into it. If you guys don't want to see that, do let me know. But I know a lot of people like seeing a sort of more actual football side of things other than just gameplay. But let's go into the actual tactic right now and break it down, including the player roles. So this is going to be how the tactic does line up. And like I said, this tactic, the mentality is going to be attacking, but there is also a lot of defensive side to the game. So be prepared for that. In possession, we have got attacking width is set to wide, um, purely because the players have got instructions to stay narrower. And I feel like if this was too narrow, then you wouldn't have any width at all. We've got pass into space selected overlap on the left and the right. We've got pass and directness on standard. The tempo is selected to higher and nothing else is selected, guys, because it's not needed. I tried having sort of, you know, shoot on sight and hit early crosses. But then I feel like there's a lot of wasted opportunity, whereas we don't want work ball into the box because we're not sort of like. This is this tactic's not about finding the perfect chance by any means. So, I mean, when I uh, for me personally, when you had shoot on sight, it was wasted. You don't really want to be pumping the ball in too much. So for me, I left everything blank, obviously in a game. If you're like a goal down or whatever, and you know, possibly you want to rush things, just try and get a little bit of luck, possibly hit early crosses, have shoot on site. But if from, from the start of the game, right off the rip, just leave it blank. You don't need anything at all. And also mix crosses in the final third as well. In transition, then we have got nothing selected for when it's been lost, but when we have won the ball, we have got counter selected because it is a counter attacking tactic at the end of the day. Um that doesn't mean that it's going to be instantly direct ball over the top. So I said, sometimes you will see, as we did in that 2D analysis there, you will see possessional play in the, you know, the diamond sort of shape. But occasionally you will see a direct pass played. And as we saw with the last goal in that game, where it went all the way from one side to the other, went over the top and he scored, it does work very well. Goalkeeper in possession, we've got nothing selected for the area slash player. They can go to the fullbacks and to the centre backs. Typically, I will say, the goalkeeper does always decide to go to the centre backs because there's three of them, so he is going to go to one of them, which is which is fine. But I I rarely saw any mistakes come out from the back at all. Out of possession, we have got a standard defensive line. You don't want to play too deep with this sort of system, and you can't really play a high line either. So standard is fine, and a higher line of engagement and the force opposition outside with the whip. Get stuck in is selected again. Conte is a manager who is happy to take a booking in the team, um, which I'm a big fan of. I, I like that style of football, so it suits me down to a T as well. Trigger press is on much more often as well, because like I said, there is a bit of pressing. It's not the most pressing system you're going to play, but your players will definitely have to do a little bit of work to win that ball back. Moving on then to the player roles, which again, a very important part of the video. The first player we're going to have is a sweeper keeper. A lot of my systems, a lot of football manager tactics in general do have sweeper keepers and not the basic goalkeeper. Nothing special about this one. Shorter pass and selected on him because he is just going to play it to the centre backs. So nothing too important with him. We then have, now this is where it gets interesting because we have got a bit of a selection. So do pay attention to this. We have got a wide centre back on the right who is set to a defensive duty on Mark Titer 
tackle harder and stay wider. Standard on the directness of passing. And that is going to be it for him. This guy is... This guy's the wide centre-back that stays back. He doesn't really push forward at all. He covers the right back. Um, because as we did see in that also, a lot of play is done through the right. And I don't want the centre-back getting too too far up in, in the play in case we do get caught out. Moving on then to the centre of the centre, which is going to be a defensive ball-playing defender. It's going to be less often on the trigger press. Tackle harder is going to be selected. Pass and directness is on standard. Dribble more. And pretty much this is... This guy can, he's not told to go up and, you know, really push up, but he can sort of dribble into that sort of where them two CDMs are because at the end of the day, them CDMs will come back and help them defensive midfielders. I very rarely saw this guy go fully up the pitch because, like I said, he's not really told to do that um, as he is on a defense duty, but you will see him sort of, you know, try and dribble a little bit more into a little bit higher up, but nothing to the point where it's going to cost you and, you know, leave you vulnerable at the back. I'm moving on then to the left-hand side, who is going to be on the support role. And this guy will get up a little bit more. We saw it a little bit in that 2D analysis. He will push up a bit more in this, and that is fine to have one of your centre-backs. Now, you could do this on the centre-back if you wanted to, and not on this one. But for me, this worked really well, having one of the wide centre-backs pushed up, and it just really helped with the play. Trigger presses on balance, mark tighter, and tackle harder is selected, and stay wider on both of them. Both of the um, wide centre-backs you need on stay wider, because then they're going to be close to the full-backs, and that is how you form them diamonds. That's how they stay there, and that's a great way of playing. Moving on to the two in midfield, is going to be a ball-winning midfielder on the defensive duty, and he's going to be trigger presses on balance. We have got him on standard passing, and that is going to be pretty much it for him. Now, the reason he's on standard passing and not on like much further passing is because if you have it on much more than standard, he will play it too long too often. You don't want him to constantly be hitting the ball long because, like I said, you do see possessional play in this system, but also you don't want him on shorter passing, like too like you don't want him on this, it's going to be too short. Standard is perfect for this position. We don't have a, a position which is always in Conte systems, a deep lion playmaker on the support role. The more attack on one of the two in midfield, but again, we'll do defensive duties as well because he has to at the end of the day. We do play quite attack and when we are sort of on the counter. So if he does need to track back, he has to do that. We've got the trigger press on balanced. We've got Mark tighter, tackle harder selected on that as well and standard on the pass and directness. And with these two in midfield, they dominated pretty much every game. I mean, obviously, in the Milan system, you would have Barella or possibly Brozovic and Barella. So they do have a great midfield. But just the way these roles work together is very good. The deep line playmaker is the guy that will play balls over the top. He'll go side to side with it. And as you can see here, like, um, when in the game, you sort of see him probably form about here. And and obviously, well, he, he'll come a little bit more narrower. And how would that look? trying to get the sort of diamond it's quite hard to do on the team sheet but in the game they do slightly drift away because they are sort of trying to form that diamond shape on either side and it works very well it does work very well moving on into the right hand side which is going to be the inside forward on attack obviously the reason why he's inside is because he does stay inside it's, it's, it's common sense i know but um we've got him on the balance trigger press sit narrower because again he does have to be narrow we've got him on roam from position purely because it doesn't affect it too badly, guys. It really doesn't. Like, I think Narrow is selected and get further forward. So he will be narrow a lot. But sometimes, especially, I've noticed, say, say the play's going on the right-hand side. The guy on the left possibly won't be narrower. He'll then sort of roam and possibly get in behind. As we saw with Mkhitaryan, he sort of went out wide. And when you don't have roam from position on, they will literally just always say narrow. And I'm convinced you miss out on a lot of potential chances. So definitely have roam from position selected. We then have cut inside with the ball, standard on the pass and directness, and also shoot more often. I did have one of these guys on shoot more often, but it worked 10 times better when they're both told to shoot more often because at the end of the day, this is quite a direct sort of way of playing. You want your, your wingers to, to be scoring goals. You want them to be shooting, even if it results in getting a set piece like a corner or something like that, forcing a save. You saw a lot of our players at Halanognu scoring goals because he'd go through and he'd hit it. He wouldn't be too scared to hit it. Same with Mkhitaryan. If they're not told to shoot more often, they'll simply just keep cutting it back and you'll waste so many potential chances. You really will. I think... No, we haven't done this one yet. It's a bit... Very same. Very same? Very similar. In fact, it is the same. We've got balanced trigger press, get further forward, sit narrower, 
roam from position. We've got standard on the direct miss and cut inside with the ball. Shoot more often. If he does have to cross it, aim it at the center, not anywhere else. Again, we didn't really target this system to be lumping the ball in the box. So it's, we don't really want, you know, to be instructing him to do that. And the last player, which is going to be the goal scorer, although he is a deep line forward. Now, don't let this put you off because I know some people are going to worry about this. Hold up ball does not mean they're going to hold up and just purely wait for the wingers to overlap and get the goals. Our strikers dominated the goals in both saves. So they're still going to be ruthless. They're still going to get goals, but it just means they are going to drop back. And if they need to, they will hold up the ball until there's actually a good passing option. They're not always going to get in behind and lose the ball. It's a very good way of playing. And it's a thing that's very good on Football Manager. So even if you don't use this tactic, try a deep line forward, guys. They're really good. We've got trigger press selected, roam from position again, more direct passing. Um, so he is the highest man up the pitch. So if he does need to switch it for some reason, that's fine. And we've got dribble more, shoot more often selected. And that is going to be that tactic completely broken down. And trust me, it's a very fun way of playing. If you like the defensive side of the game and you like quite a counter-attack and style, then this is the tactic for you because it is very good. It's fun to play with. As I said, my one piece of advice would be strengthen the back line in your save, guys. Get a good back line because that is where most of the work is done. Um, thinking of other bits of advice. So possibly if you're playing a slightly tougher team and you want to be more resilient change the mentality to positive possibly i wouldn't go below that though do never never go to cautious from the rip if you're a few goals up you want to see that out go cautious but never start on cautious guys never start on it but as always i will put this um tactic is as a download link in the description it's going to be a media fire link guys completely safe this is just put there because if you guys don't want to sit here and click click for click copy this step for step you can simply download the tactic click on this go to load and locate it in your pc and it will translate everything over it will do the player roles it will do the tactics and then you guys can tweak it how you want or use it exactly how i've set it up but no it's a very good tactic i guarantee you're going to get some results with it guys and as always please do leave a comment below of how you get on because i do like to hear how it goes on a lot of people are have started to comment of how they're getting on i've had a lot of people done really wonders with the ajax on the ajax sorry the ten hog tactic and also the clop one so it is interesting to see how you guys get on with the tactics but that is going to be it for today guys hope you guys have a great day i hope you have enjoyed the video if you have please leave a like on the video be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow the social medias which can be found in the description and i'll see you in the next one